Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2020, episode number 33. We're just about to the end of the season, and then we definitely have playoffs ahead of us at 46 and 25. Currently, we're on our way to a pretty good seed overall. We've been really good at home, not so good on the road. However, uh, we have won two or three straight road games. At last episode, we had this long, long stretch of difficult road games against top teams. Ten straight road games against top teams. Not in one stretch, but throughout the episode. Finally, in between the last episode and this episode, I did play a few games, and we won all of them. A couple of them were on the road, and they were against teams below 500. Now, we've had still some difficulty with the games like this. T-Bulbs, they're 34 and 37. Not a bad team. We get the win this time. Anthony Towns gets 34 points and 18 rebounds, but it's not enough. We've got enough pieces stretched out in our first five that we're able to overcome those one-star teams. The teams that have multiple stars are the ones we're still really struggling with. So what I'm finding at this point is we now have 10 games to go in the season, and let's go ahead and check in uh, on the conference standings. Knicks still on top. Pelican second. Hawks still third, and actually they dropped back a little bit. They had been up higher. They, they had been the best team in basketball for a while, and we recently got a, a very difficult road win against them that boosted us up a bit. The Heat, 76ers, Grizzlies, Nets, Pacers, and the Wizards are close, as are the Cavaliers and Bulls, and maybe even the Hornets, though they're starting to get to that point where they're just about out of it. Uh, whoa, mind blown. Uh, we are two games clear at the top. That's not accurate. We're a game and a half clear at the top over the Mavericks right now. Two games ahead of the Lakers. I don't know why the games behind is so off since we expanded to two more teams and why it can't seem to calculate things properly. But with five straight wins, nine and one in our last ten, we have moved into potentially the number one seed. That's the Thunder at 37 and 33. They are woeful on the road and pretty decent at home. I would think we would be able to beat them, especially with that home court advantage, in about six games, probably. I don't feel confident that we could walk over anybody uh, at this point, unless we were to, say, play the Grizzlies or the Aces or the Bucks, maybe the Spurs, but, you know, teams that aren't going to make the playoffs. I, I just don't trust our road, road record quite enough. So that 18 and 19 is definitely looking better. We've been close at every road game, but we're we are definitely losing a few too many of those. But as we're going to push our way through those final 10 games, uh, I certainly like the place we're in. And I do think that we are finally a team that's good enough to get beyond the first round. Here's a winnable road game, but not the easiest. The Nuggets certainly aren't a bad team. They're over 500 at home, and we don't win it. But those are games that I'm a little more confident in, that we can win a bit more often. This is the kind of game that we absolutely should win. And we get blown out. That's actually the first loss we've had at home in quite a while. Uh, and, and it's been Houston. The last loss we had at home, I think, was Houston. So that's a little odd <laughs> that uh, that one team has been uh, a difficult matchup for us this year. Multiple star team seems to be where we get in trouble. Maybe that was it. But that's what we're going to run into in the playoffs. Because here we are with the Thunder. Potential playoff matchup. Eight games left to go in the season. Uh, 
and looking at who their stars are. I like our chances against them, but we lose that one. And, and that's the thing. is I, I just don't think we're quite there yet. We're still a year or two away from really being a competitive team. And after we had gone 9-1 and one over those previous 10 now, wow, that is a super hard home game. The Knicks... 52 and 25 had the best record in basketball. Uh, I hate this game for this. Really do. Really? We've, he's been a. We, we've lost three straight games. And these guys have been studs lately, so now they're going to play even worse. <sighs> oh, this game. Okay, well, there you go. Difficult Knicks team. We do get the win at home where we've been really tough to beat. Like I said, the, the Rockets are the only ones that have beat us in ages at home. It's just, it's the road games. And here we are again against a crazy hard team on the road. So we had that little, little stretch where we had some winnable road games and we won a lot of those. Boosted our, our road record quite a bit. And we get the occasional win against the good teams on the road, which is definitely showing that progress and how much better we are. But we're not there yet. I mean, we didn't even have one team, one player on the team make the all-star team. Why? Because we've just got a team of good players. But we don't have any stars yet. Uh, Walker and Fox both can develop to that next stage where they at least are good enough to be stars. Uh, Nets are a good team, but they've been pretty bad on the road. Wow, 163, 156? What? Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Well, I haven't seen a scoreline like that in ages. Jeez, it looked like an all-star game. Richardson having issues again. No, there's not going to be a change. You clearly have an attitude issue. All right, here we are. Nick still on top. Pelicans, Hawks, they've come back into it. Uh, i got to stop looking at this and looking just at their records. This has been horribly inaccurate. I mean, you can see all these zeros on the games behind. Okay, so we're down to the two seed right now, and it is incredibly close. First to fourth. I mean, we have a single game separating the top four teams, and we're caught in that half game in between. That right now is second place. Wow, okay. Uh, we got a battle on our hands here with only four games to play. These guys all have three to play. And nothing is certain about the playoff seedings right now. All right, so we have the Jazz. It's another tough matchup. Uh, and they're an okay road team. This won't be easy. Oh, man. Not a good time to start losing some games at home, is it? Two losses here in the final ten games of the season at home. When we hadn't lost in ages, it's a really bad sign if we're starting to lose games. And we got to play the Knicks on the road. Oh, this could be back-to-back -back losses. Oh my goodness, we beat the Knicks twice. Okay, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> 76ers at home again. Good teams. Where? How have we had nothing but good teams on, on the schedule most of the season? I feel like the schedule is not balanced. I feel like we're not playing the same number of games against opponents. 
118. Wood 07. Walker with 25. One to play. It's against the Lakers. You want comments again? I'm not even going to bother. I don't want to comment on these. I can't delete the email. But it did let me proceed without responding. All right. Knicks half game on top, and they are one game from being done. Pelicans have two to play. And the Hawks are still really close. Hawks are out of it, though, with three losses behind. Wizards. Oh, the Pacers are done. 42 and 40. They're done. Uh, so the Wizards can't catch them. So there you go. There's your eight teams. Well, the Nets have two to play. They could lose both, and the Wizards win their last one in their level. So not necessarily over with. Uh, but here are the Lakers on top now with one to play. We have one to play. And we're exactly one game behind the Lakers. And who do we play in the final game of the season? The Lakers. Uh, if we win, does that make us the one seed? I don't know. The Clippers have the same record we do with one to play. And guess who's only one game back? It's the Mavericks. So it seems like all four teams could still flip at this point. We could all have virtually identical records, but not quite. I mean, to be honest, if the Lakers win and beat us, then the Mavericks can't be the one seed. If we win to beat the Lakers, then both of us beat the Mavericks. So, uh, that being said, though, it's still, the top four could still flip almost completely on its head. The Jazz are only a couple games behind, but then you do have a bit of a drop-off, so you really don't want to be the four seed. First three seeds look okay. But even then, none of them. No one's easy. The Warriors, the Thunder, the Blazers have been a tough team for us at times. Uh, in terms of road records, the Mavericks and the Clippers seem to be the best equipped to get into other stadiums and do something. And as, as for home records, it's the Lakers and us who have been the most difficult to beat. But all of us are really good home teams. No one's going to be an easy out in the Western Conference playoffs. Uh, the Suns are not going to catch the Blazers or the Thunder. So your eight teams are decided in the West. And we get the Lakers to... For us, anyway, we could still be a first, second, third, or fourth seed. So, I suppose we'll watch the final game of the regular season before we head into the playoffs, because there is a lot riding on this game. Speaking of a lot riding on this game, where are those other potential teams at? There's the Mavericks. They play the Thunder at home. That's actually a potential first-round matchup for them. Clippers don't play today. Okay. James Davis both in the starting lineup. James only 10 points a game this season. Getting quite old. There's Tony Carr. That's definitely not the lineup of the Lakers of a couple seasons ago. Still a good team, though. Still a very good team, especially with Davis. Uh, but this is not the team it was a couple seasons ago. They are much more beatable than they were when they 
did they match or, or beat by one game the uh, best season record, the first season we played? Playing at home is really going to help for this game. This feels like a playoff game because it's going to make a huge difference in the seeding. Wow, Lakers off to a really hot start. Davis is 5 for 5 with 12 points. He's almost the only player who's even scored in the first six minutes of this game. One field goal by Richardson and one free throw from Bagley are the only other scores until finally there Richardson scores at three. But what a weird, 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 weird start to this game. I guess it's all Davis. He's got 14 points. I mean, he, he has outscored both teams combined. Hey, what's that for? I did not tell the Epic Game Store that it can do random pop-ups. Definitely did not authorize that. Anyway, uh, we trail by 17 points here. Early second quarter, uh, just horrendous start for us as a team. And it's not that they as a team have done anything phenomenal. It's been one player, Anthony Davis, just controlling this entire game. So we'll see if the uh, team can start picking it up here in the second quarter a bit as the starters begin to get back out there. Walker's 1 for 7 uh, to start this one. Barnes is 0 for 4. Bagley's 1 for 4. Collie Stein's 0 for 1. Uh, Thompson's still in the game because he seems to be the only one scoring for us. He's got 8 points on 3 of 8 shooting. Now Beasley out there, so something's going on with Fox. Hopefully it's not an injury and just a couple early fouls. Davis has 25 points already. Jeez. <sighs> we trailed by 15 at the half. And where are you? Fox, seven minutes, three fouls, no points. It is foul trouble, and unfortunately it's three of them, not two of them. So Thompson's still in the game here to start. And again, that's that really hurts us. When Fox has foul trouble or an injury or something along those lines, we're going to really struggle because we don't have a proper backup point guard. Thompson plays uh, okay himself, but he's only got two assists, and he's played most of this game. He's just not a distributor of the ball. So he's not running the offense properly, and we struggle. Uh, we've battled back slightly. It's a 10-point game now. I mean, we've got a chance to get back to single digits here. Come on now, Davis has 33. James has six assists, but just one point. That's so weird. Uh, Walker starting to catch fire. This could be good for us. He's got 18 points now. He's only five of 15, but considering how he started, he's made his last three shots, I believe, and has 24 points now. Four shots now in a row, 24 points in the game. So he's catching fire, and we're back within single digits as we start the fourth quarter. Still haven't seen Fox. I didn't see Fox at all in the third quarter. He's only got three fouls. He must have been out there at some point and immediately picked up that fourth foul. But we get within five points without our star point guard. And the score is level. It's 82-82. Come on, we've got a run going here. We're back down by three as they answered back after we tied the score. But what a huge turnaround this is. Fox finally into the game. 
He's got four fouls, so yeah, he, he must have immediately picked that fourth foul up. But we've got a two-point game with four minutes to play. Fox gets his first two points of the game, actually from the free throw line. He didn't even get his not even attempted one field goal in this game. Three-point game. We cannot afford to miss free throws like that. Put back dunk. We trail by three with a minute 45. Come on, guys. This game really matters. Fox, fifth foul. He has done nothing in this game. Fox is the reason we've lost, and we have lost. It's a 10-point game all of a sudden. So we, we were right there. Score was level, and then it was a two-point game. And Fox, I think Fox might have even fouled out. Look at all the fouls. I mean, we have a billion fouls. And you look at their five on the court, other than Capella, two total fouls. 49 points for Anthony Davis on 14 of 26 shooting. How? I mean, how can you beat that when we get called for a foul every two seconds? <laughs> Fox played a total of 13 minutes. Had two field goal attempts. Fouled out of the game. Bagley, fouled out of the game. Richardson, five fouls. Thompson, four fouls. Everybody who played had at least two fouls. We had 35 fouls called against us in this game. Somebody really wanted the Lakers to win this game. <laughs> I mean... Oh gosh, that was that was pitiful. I, you know, we, we we got right there. We fought back, leveled the score. Now they answered with a three, so can't say anything that. But it was free throw, free throw, free throw, free throw, free throw, free throw throughout that game, and our star player never even saw the court and fouled out. Okay, uh, Warriors lost. Where is it? Where's the one we're looking for? Mavericks won their game. So we have the same record. Uh, we'll see if that puts them above us or, or not. Last one is the Clippers. They play the Jazz, but they're at home. They won as well. So the other three teams all won their games. Knicks take the one seed in the East. They stayed right there ahead of the Pelicans all season long, about one game ahead of them. Hawks, 76ers, Heat, Grizzlies, Nets, Pacers, Wizards. First time in ages, a team in the East gets to 500, doesn't make the playoffs. Celtics miss out. Cavaliers miss out. Look how close they actually are, though. And that's a much better East than you're used to seeing. Lakers get the one seed, beating us in that final weird game. Clippers, Mavericks, and we drop all the way to the four seed. We had the tiebreaker over the Clippers. Mavericks had the tiebreaker over us. And we go from a win makes us the one seed to we end up the four seed on the final day of the season. And now we're stuck playing the only team in the next four that is demonstrably close. They have the same road record that we have. Similar home records. It's going to be a difficult series to beat the Jazz now. And then we got to play the Lakers if we do. If, you know, assuming that they get out of the first round as well. Uh, Warriors, 6, Thunder, 7. The Blazers slipped to 8 on the final day of the season. So they flip-flopped. They both lost their final games, though. I don't see how... That ended up happening. That's number of games played, I'm sure. That 
decided that one. The Thunder are really bad on the road. The Warriors are really bad on the road, so you can, you can consider those two uh, easier to beat, considering that they already have the disadvantage of being the road matchup. Suns miss out, plus 500. That's normal in the West. But then you actually do see a bit of a drop-off. Wolves, Nuggets, Rockets, Aces, Spurs, Bucks, Grizzlies. Okay, well. So what does this do? What does this do? Um... Well, that, that definitely shook things up. Never would have thought one game pushed us from the first seed all the way to the four seed. And to see it play out like that, right? Just foul after foul after foul after foul after foul. It makes you think that there's corruption in the NBA. Which, <laughs> wait, there is. There is corruption. Uh, all the sports have it. And don't get me started on the government. Oh my goodness. Plenty of corruption to be found. It's a game, though. <laughs> it's a game. I, I'm, I'm kind of joking around. But we, we do drop for the first, potentially the first seed. We had the second seed. We dropped to the fourth seed on the final day of the season. So we head to the playoffs now. No longer... A favorite of any kind right the one spot we didn't want to be in was the four seed because between the five and eight seed the only team that was anywhere near those top four teams that were all locked in neck and neck was that utah jazz team I think the top four teams are close enough to each other that second round matchups aren't going to make that big of a difference, right? It's that first round that is most impacted. So Knicks, Pelicans, Hawks, 76ers all claim game one. Knicks win by 11. Pelicans won by 12. So all of the games actually were comfortable. None of them were single digits. Can we do the same? It was all home team wins. Oh, hello. Just notice where I'm at on time. Okay, so we're going to get game one in, but not watching. Game two, we'll watch. Here we go. Game one. We'll box score this one. And we do get the win. 109-102, but that was not comfortable. Seven points is rather close. Uh, Knicks claim game two. Nets even the series with the Pelicans. Hawks claim game two, so they lead 2-0. 76ers lead 2-0. Lakers win game one against the Blazers. The only upset is the Warriors beating the Mavericks in at least the first game. Second game upset with the Nets winning there. Uh, and our box score... Only 21 fouls this time. <laughs> yeah, and similar numbers to them on that. Uh, rebounding, plus 8. Assists, we're about level. Turnovers, actually a minus 7 in the game. Uh, Three-pointers, just 8 for 22. We were actually very similar. It's... Surprising that we actually kind of won this game. 90% uh, from free throw line with 32 attempts. That's a big part of it. Fox 11 for 14. And everybody else was perfect. Fox had 25. Walker had 31 in the game. Richardson 17. No double doubles, but it was balanced team effort on the rebounds. Holly Stein, five fouls, only ended up playing 19 minutes. 
but Bull Bull was solid in his place. Doubled up his scoring. Couple of blocks. And we take game one. Points in the paint, small advantage. Very balanced game, really. Uh, Mitchell had 33. Gobert, 18. Stone had 12. But we held most everybody else. Uh, Stone was just 3 for 12 shooting. Wright was 1 for 8. Conley was 2 for 7. Gobert was solid, 7 for 9. Double, 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 double performance for him. Oh, <laughs> all right. Check this out. Worst performance of the day in terms of the plus minus goes to Dwayne Dedman. 26 minutes, 3 for 9, 5 rebounds, couple assists, 8 points, and a minus 19. Aren't we happy about that? All right, well, we get game one. We've got a little bit of a head start here into the series. Hopefully we can keep that home court advantage uh, in terms of largest leads. A lot of ties. Game was actually back and forth most of the way. They never led by double digits. The most we led by was 11. We won by 7, so that could have been pretty close to it there in the fourth quarter. You can see it was neck and neck. For three quarters. So I think that lead was established only in the fourth. Anyway, I'm Kathleen Gamer. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. And bye for now.